um, training Jason Scott Lee for Dragon the Bruce Lee story. Uh, now, I know that Jason was under a tremendous amount of pressure to portray Bruce Lee the way he did. And as yourself, as, as someone who yourself was a huge fan of Bruce, was there a certain amount of pressure on you to make sure that Jason looked the part? And, and, and how quickly did Jason take to um, the, the, the training? Well, oh boy, we can, we can go on for an hour on that. Uh, I explain <laughs> a lot in the book. That is, uh, you know, uh, you work a long time in the movie business and uh, you think you've seen everything. You've been through everything. And at that stage of my career, I saw, I thought I'd seen everything. And that was, uh, that was quite a movie, quite of an experience. And uh, like I explained to you, first of all, like I explained to you uh, uh, very little throughout our conversations is, and uh, I'll try to make it real short now is, uh, I was very blessed because uh, people saw things in me and knew I had things mentally and physically of an understanding uh, than most. Um, and Rob Cohn was one of them, the director, producer on that movie. Uh, we had worked together on another movie and the book explains that. There's a lot of history in that book uh, on the dragon. Um, that was probably the hardest show, most difficult show I ever did. And uh, it was enjoyable but at the same time it was very very difficult i mean there's a lot to that uh, that i had no idea i was doing a screen test you know i was teaching jason scott lee and all of a sudden rob cohen says we need a screen test in order to do the movie well i thought we had the movie already sorry i, I suppose essentially then they had to demonstrate on screen that jason could do the moves could essentially uh, do all the moves and the mannerisms of Bruce before they would even allow the film to go ahead. So I suppose it's it, yeah. I, I suppose it's safe to say with, without you that the film wouldn't have been made full stop. Well, I don't know if you ever saw the screen test. It's on YouTube. I, I've seen footage of the screen uh, test. Yeah, it's um, it, you can find it on YouTube if you if you if, if you search long enough. But. Uh, yeah, even from that sort of yeah, I had, sort of early uh, footage, you, you can see that Jason's yeah, got the mannerisms. I had, I had, the mannerisms I had, a, uh, I had to, not a very long time to teach Jason. And it, it's a wonderful story how we got Jason. Um, you know, believe it or not, um, uh, there were three, three, two other actors involved. And believe it or not, Rob Cohn um, asked me, you know, I, I screen test all three of them. I, uh, I interviewed all three of them physically. And I came up with Jason was the best. And uh, Rob Cohn followed my lead. And he picked Jason. Now, whether or not, you know, Rob Cohn decided already that it was Jason, you know, he asked me, he had me, he, he picked three guys and he asked me to interview physically the three guys and I picked Jason. And then we decided uh, we're going to start training for the movie. Then he came to me to do a screen test. And I said, well, we got to hire a bad guy to fight Jason for the screen test. Because Rob Cohen explained to me, I can't get the movie going. The Black Tower Universal won't give me the money unless they see the guy on film playing Bruce Lee. And uh, that was a big challenge because um, I've always imitated Bruce Lee. I noticed when you were playing the, the silver mass ninja in Revenge of the Ninja, you had a lot of Bruce Lee mannerisms when you were the ninja in, in Revenge of the Ninja, the silver mass ninja. A lot of things you did there were very similar in terms of mannerisms to, uh, to Bruce. Yes, a lot of people don't realize, and this is the first time I'm being asked, but in fact, um, that was a combination of uh, Bruce, my version of Bruce movements and me incorporating um, a little Bruce Lee 
um, a little um, um, uh, uh, Kelly, the dancer, um, uh, a little um, uh, of those guys into the character. Um, because uh, whenever stunt people fight, they have no personality. And that's another thing that drew me far, uh, gave me a lot of work because everything I did, even if I was doubling an actor, the actor would copy me because the director and the stunt coordinator, when I first started, I wasn't a stunt coordinator. It was only till later on I became a stunt coordinator. But, you know, the, the stunt coordinator, the director would say, okay, we want you to do this. And I would do this, but I would do it in my version. And it was always with animation, always with uh, 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 motion in my face, motion in my body, action acting, you know, and even the actor would copy me, which all stunt guys never did. So that's another thing I brought in to me. Um, so I understood Bruce Lee. I, my, uh, my art isn't Jit Kwon Do, but I worked out with a lot of Jit Kwon Do people in my lifetime. That's how you get to know other styles, is you're a black belt and you have enough common sense, you understand how to learn uh, from other people and how to pick up other styles from other black belts, from other styles when you're a black belt. So I knew Jit Kwon Do visually. I knew Bruce Lee visually. We all copied him. We all imitated him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's what I went with. You know, I had, uh, you know, it was months and months of training, not only physically, but you know, we looked at all of Bruce Lee's interviews, all of Bruce Lee's movies every day, you know, um, you know, we worked on it and, uh, that's what we came up with. Jason worked very hard, um, very hard worker. I mean, we worked 16, 17 hours, literally sometimes we were, we lived together practically, you know, that's how important this character it was very important. You know, because Bruce is a god, a literal yeah. god to, to so many people out in the world. Um, in fact, I tell, I, I tell a story uh, in the book, and I won't explain it, but uh, Jason did break down. And I tell, I tell the story in the book. And uh, we had a major conversation. And he went on because of our major conversation. Um, now, um, uh, what became of our relationship as we were, because of the people I hired, I mean, this is a whole soap opera. This movie was a whole soap opera, uh, that I was involved <laughs> with. Um, what became of our relationship as we were doing this movie, um, changed and it was because of the people, some of the people. I had to work with and some of the people I hired, um, which I explain in the book. Um, but it was, uh, it was an opportunity of a lifetime because how many stunt guys, Caucasian, could say they were the stunt coordinator, the original teacher, and the fight coordinator because I shot many sequences on film. Uh, before we did the movie, yeah. on the movie of his fights in every scene of the dragon. So Rob Cohn had that to look at too, which most people don't know about. But it's probably one of my biggest honors in a lifetime that a, a punk kid from Brooklyn, Caucasian, stuntman martial artist, did the dragon and had those opportunities to be to be uh, uh, a uh, a uh, uh, a th of a, somebody of importance at the time for this movie to go in many ways, shapes, and form, and I thank Rob Cohn, uh, 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 the entire thing. Beautiful guy, wonderful guy, um, 
very, very, very good director, and I'm surprised he's not doing more. 